camping, so we just bought this camper. She's yours. Yeah, it's over there. <laughs> grease and walnuts and acorns. And action. Welcome back to the channel. We wanted to, first of all, thank you for watching. Um, we didn't know that anybody would be interested in this sort of thing when we first started, but we actually have some subscribers now, and it is, it, it's neat. That's pretty neat. So, again, thank you. Uh, we we're going to talk a little bit about what this video is going to have in it. Uh, as for myself, I have kind of a idea of what I want to do. So, if the engine eventually needs to be rebuilt, we'll go that route. I don't really want to do a crate motor, but... If it comes down to it, we have a nice camper and the engine is a dog and we need we need help, then we'll address the engine at that point. That being said, what I do intend to do, um, one, I'm going to rebuild the carburetor because it needs to go back on the, the motor. Um, also, I don't know if any of you have watched a, a channel called Project Farm, but the guy is constantly comparing different things. Um, viewers will write in and say that they want to uh, have him test different products. So he's tested this stuff called Engine Restorer and it actually is supposed to improve engine compression. So I want to try that with this oil change and see if it helps. Um, that would be my first line of defense. But anyway, uh, there's things that I want to try. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> I know. I am very chatty. <laughs> um, also in the video today, we need to address the black tank, a.k.a. the poo tank. Um, we don't know if it's full. Based on the condition of the bathroom, we're assuming it's full, although we were told it was not full. <laughs> to the brim. Um, so um, we have a portable little, like, doo-doo trolley. <laughs> <laughs> that we're going to um, try to empty into that. and um, That's a technical term. Technical term. <laughs> and then the, the next step would be to get rid of that old toilet that's still in there. You'll also maybe notice that our garage has a new addition. And the kids are hoping that we will leave these in the garage. But um, the plan is that these couches are going to make it into the RV. So I'll tell you more about these couches and the plans in a little bit. I know Tyler wants to get going on that oil change so I can <laughs> I can let him go and um, catch back up later and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the plans for these couches. A lot of fun stuff and thanks for sticking with us. Just one more thing. <laughs> That's a baby toilet seat. <laughs> 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 All right, thanks. All right, hi everybody, I'm back. I'm trying to uh, rebuild this carburetor this morning. Um, the engine's been out of commission for a little while now and we haven't been able to determine its overall health. So um, it's kind of cold and snowy outside right now. So I'm gonna take this time to do this carburetor and get it back on there and then we can take the next step in the uh, diagnosing the engine condition. This is a Carter Thermo Quad Carburetor. It flows between 800 and 850 CFM. It's going to be a gas guzzler. Little primaries and gigantic secondaries. When you really wanted to feed it the onions, that's when this, uh, the secondaries would open up. Plastic main body. I got a rebuild kit from Rock Auto. I'm going to blow it all apart, put it back together, and we're going to be as good as new. <laughs> Fingers crossed. cleaning and cleaning and cleaning some more. I have parts disassembled, screws all over the place, linkage rods soaking, um, trying to clean them up. Um, got everything disassembled that I want to uh, take apart and I've been 
using some brake parts cleaner to clean up all the, the valleys and passages and jets and airways and all the things that come with a carburetor. I've got all that cleaned up. Now I'm gonna take some air, and blow some air through that, make sure everything's clean and dry, and then I'm gonna start reassembly. We are done, it's rebuilt, finished product. It looks a lot better than it did. We'll see how it works out. Wish us luck. Okay, so I'm just tidying up a few things we didn't get to finish the other day on the back wall and um, added a couple boards. So when we go to install the ladder that we'll have something to screw that into and um, point out the real winner here of this RV. I don't know how, being 47 years old, but this caulk strip stuff is the most amazing sticky stuff in the world. Um, we've bought some of that before for like the bathroom and it never stuck the way this does. So this is something special and I don't know where to get it, but I'd like to find it. All right, so we're gonna check out this bathroom. See if we can see in the black tank. This sounded very Midwestern, bathroom. <laughs> All right. I'm going to see if we can see what's going on with the black tank. It's a little cleaner than when you saw it last. We still have some work to do, the cleanliness, but uh, against my better judgment, I'm going to hit this toilet flusher. And, uh, oh gosh. Let's see if we can see down there. If I drop my phone, oh man, don't drop my phone. There's stuff in there. I, I can't say that it's full though. It does look like a um, pyramid of sorts oh. has formed. The Egyptians uh, have been in there. The Egyptians. All right, so let me out. Ugh. All right, so here's the situation. I'm not 100% sure I wanna actually show what we just saw. So I'm going to describe it. <laughs> um, there's a pyramid of possibly toilet paper at the bottom, but the black tank does not look full. It looks like there's some distance between the bottom of the toilet and that. So we might go to empty the tank and nothing might technically come out. So here's the uh, illustrious black tank emptier port <laughs> so this um this right here is what you pull and um this particular camper doesn't have a gray tank it doesn't look like it's just got the black so all of the sink water and shower also goes into the black tank and it's a decent sized tank um but we're gonna pull this hook our hose that guy onto here that's gonna hook to this right here and um this is the doo-doo trolley i don't know what they're really called portable something and then um we'll wind up taking this to dump it in our sewer so not actually not a storm drain but our actual sewer most houses will have like a clean out or something that you can put your hose down and you put a 
actual garden hose on here and flush everything out to clean out this blue tank in the end. So that's the plan and here we go. I'm gonna stencil doo-doo trolley on our little trolley. Trademark. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> right. Uh, People be raving about it as seen on TV. Right. <laughs> you know. Sometimes these valves go bad, so you just get ready to catch oh, stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. This. All right, take two. Take two. You hold that end. No way. We had the wrong <laughs> extension on there. I mean, with gravity, like, it's questionable whether that's even going to, it's just going to collect in the hose. But do yeah. I really have to hold this end? I would like for you to actually oh, gosh. participate. All right. <laughs> I'm the camera person. Right. Here we go. <sighs> oh. So there's at least some that seep past the valve. Yeah. Just a little. Not too bad. Not too bad. It was a piece of grass. <laughs> okay. All right. Lock it in. Locked in. You ready? You ready? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. All right. Here we go. Let it rip. Let it rip. All right. I mean. Is things happening? No. Oh, that's a bad sign. <laughs> well, I think it's empty. Uh, I mean, except yeah. for the pyramid. So what happens is if you're at a campground and you leave that valve open where you just, you know, anytime you flush, it runs into the sewer. Um, if you're at a full hookup site, it doesn't leave enough liquid in your tank, in your black tank to really flush everything out. So if you're at a full hookup site, you want to leave that closed until um, it's kind of full and then you let it all go at once so i think they left it open and there's paper and whatnot built up but no significant paper. i mean we don't even have to clean this blue thing so that's a win this is a win yes <laughs> <laughs> a win aha i'll take it all right so i'm back out in the camper today's a big day at least in my mind i am going to be putting the carburetor back on the engine we're going to hook up the linkage the vacuum lines the fuel line pour a little gas down his throat and hopefully get this thing to fire off. We're gonna go ahead and get this tape off of here, see what we're dealing with. Um, I think I'm gonna to have to run to the, uh, to the parts store, get some new vacuum lines. The stuff that was on here was pretty cruddy. Um, I mean, just old dry rotted stuff, uh, probably cracks in, uh, in the the hoses uh in the rubber and that is going to lead to vacuum leaks which vacuum leaks will lead to poor engine performance so you don't want your engine sucking air from places that uh it's not supposed to Okay, one thing before I put the carburetor on and start hooking everything up, I'm going to replace this oil pressure sending unit. This, uh, this is what sends your signal to your oil pressure gauge on the dash. This could be the reason why we were having faulty uh, readings. Um, I was actually having a, uh, at one point, no oil pressure, and then um, I actually got it to come back, but I wound up banging around on the... Uh, the oil pressure sending unit here and then it started reading good pressure again. So I'm going to replace this in case there's something internally here uh, that is ruptured or sticking. I will replace that and hopefully give us a good sound oil pressure reading. All right, so here's the new one going on. Okay, I got a new uh, carburetor gasket here to mount the carburetor onto the intake so I will put that on there like so and for the big moment here is the carburetor finally sitting back down on the intake again
all right, the carburetor's back on, ready to go. I've got the linkage hooked up, I've got the vacuum hoses hooked up, I've got a couple I've still got to block off, and then I've got to put the spark plug uh, wires back on the spark plugs, and we are ready to go. All right, we're ready for our first test. I just put five gallons of gas in it and a battery. Uh, probably not charged, but we'll give it a try anyway and see what, uh, what happens. Oh, that was a lot. Okay. All right, here we go. Key on and ignition. <laughs> Battery's not good enough. All right, let me uh, jump it. All right, test number two. Got it jumped outside. We are gonna try it again. And contact. a lot faster that's different <laughs> uh, all right let's see what we got here whoa oh my gosh it is a heavy drinker but man I am not making it right Well, I mean, <sighs> let's try it one more time. All right, well, back to the drawing board. I'll get back to you in a second. I found my problem. Let me show you real quick what I missed. My coil to, let's see, distributor wire. So, uh, overlooked. Let me uh, connect that real quick. Okay, so back together. Let us do this again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, such a relief. That is exciting. <laughs> that is, I'm thrilled. Uh, I missed the wire, but uh, that was an easy fix. So I am super excited. So we are back with the famous couches. We got these online at an auction and we had to buy them sight unseen. Um, actually got into a little bit of a bidding war and paid a little bit more than I was hoping that we'd have to pay for these. Um, but I think it was still a good deal. Um, they both actually fold out into beds. So this is just kind of a preview, a little introduction. We're not gonna do anything with these today, but the idea is that these are gonna make it into the RV um, we talked about rearranging the floor plan in a previous video so that there was a larger open living space. And so um, the idea is to keep one of these so that it can fold out and basically make an L shape. They're very easy to fold out. We're going to demonstrate for you and kind of talk through what they're going to look like in the RV. First thing we need to do is get rid of the cushions. So we'll just oh, that's funny. Ah! throw those over. All right. And then this was going to pull up. Okay. So oh, the whole up. thing. Now the legs come out and then pull it like toward the ceiling. There we go. Good. Watch your toes. That's right. nice. And then, so you don't fall into the hole. Oh. All right. So these are actually cushiony, this black part also. So I don't know what this is, maybe like a queen size bed. Is it comfy? Yeah. All right. 
I mean, this looks a little harder. It's kind of weird. But anyway, um, like I said, we weren't sure the dimensions. We're actually going to need to modify this a little bit and probably remove this section and create some storage underneath. We're going to need to fit our freshwater tank under here. Um, there's going to be some storage compartments under the other one. So we've got some work to do, but um, hopefully they work out. And if they don't and we see something better in the meantime, we might go with a whole different plan. Hey. Oh, I'm sure this will go according to plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay, seven eight socket. Ah. To this I can get my armpit. Oil's definitely black. So we'll let that drain for a little bit. Let's see if we can get this filter off. Here is the, uh, <laughs> the existing oil filter. Uh, looks like a bunch of rusty crud on the bottom of that. I mean, Weird. It's a Fram. Fram Dango, a PH43. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be putting Fram back on here. Can you see this belt? <laughs> huh. Oh, that seems a little bit looser than it's supposed to be. I guess we'll address that down the road. What are the odds that this will just twist right off of here? Not good. Not good at all. Ah, yes. Oil filters that were put on so tight they'll make you honeyate yourself. I think I could get the right adjustment on my wrench. No. Oh, come on now. Ooh. Well, oh yeah, that's the stuff. Here we go. Oh boy. All right, we're gonna go with a Wix 51068 for a big block 440. Don't forget to mark your date and the mileage for the next guy. So today's brand, what everybody's using, uh, Rotella 1540. It's the uh, the T4, so it's not it's a non-synthetic. This is a, just a conventional oil. It is a heavier oil. It's a diesel oil. So what I'm doing is I'm filling this filter a little bit. Now the filter goes on sideways, so. I probably won't be able to fill it all the way to the top and keep it all in there before it goes on the motor. But uh, this way it doesn't take extra time for the, uh, the motor to build pressure. The oil is already in the filter and it doesn't have to run through there, you know, on initial startup. Here's the engine restorer. This is what I'm going to use to hopefully bring back some compression back to those two weak cylinders. So it says shake well. I'm going to do that real quick. Wow. This dark gray slash black liquid. So I'm just pouring it directly into the valve cover. Um, I've got the oil fill tube off since I just resealed the valve cover gasket, so I figured I'd just do it this way. Oh, it's got a bluish hue to it. That's odd.
let me know in the comments if you have ever used this stuff. Um, I've seen different things online. You know, a lot of people don't like to believe in uh, snake oil and that sort of thing, and I don't deny that there is some definite um, additives out there that don't do what they advertise. But I'm willing to try this. So there's that. Like I said, that was a half quart. I am now going to add four quarts of the uh, Rotella 1540. All right, I've got the oil in in the engine restorer. I will start it, stop it, and check the oil just to see if it uh, is at the right level. I'm gonna check the filter, check the drain plug, make sure all that's not leaking. Hopefully the valve covers are not gonna leak. Um, I'm not gonna hold my breath. Need to do some work on that exhaust manifold. It is in fact touching that exhaust, or I'm sorry, that valve cover. So I'll take care of that at a later date. Now, as far as the engine restorer goes, it says that you need to run the vehicle for a minimum of two hours, like in normal driving. So um, I won't be able to do that right away. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll uh, start it and make sure everything is not leaking. But as far as getting results from that engine restore, we actually have to put some hours and a little bit of miles on this. So it's a possibility that we'll be able to do that this weekend. I'm not really sure just yet. We'll give it a try and then I will report back as soon as I'm able to do another compression test on those cylinders. Cool. All right, go. Okay. I hope you enjoy this video. Wait, go. <laughs> we enjoy this video? No. I hope we enjoy this video. <laughs> we oh, hope Lord. you enjoy it. Oh. Did I keep saying I? Uh huh. Dang it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Next video, we should be able to get out there and power wash, really clean up the exterior. This is something we've been looking forward to. At least I have. I love power washing. Um, been looking forward to since we first got it. And I wish it was one of the first things we did. And it just with the weather, we kind of had to do some projects out of a normal order. Um, but hopefully we're going to have some better weather. And I think that's what's in store next. We hope you enjoyed the video. We're trying to decide how much engine content to put in the videos. If you would let us know, that would be great, and we'll see you next time.